Hello team and welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself, Jonathan M. Eds Pierce. This is Ukraine War Frontline Update for the 7th of June 2023. Sorry, I'm a bit late today. Uh, real life got away and all that kind of thing. Right, where should we go to first? Let's go to Belgorod and just have a little mention of what's going on in Novaya Tavolzhanka, just to the north east of Kharkiv. Not a lot of detail coming out about there. I... There was some video coming out yesterday. Russian rebels in Belgorod Oblast are rolling with main battle tanks through Novaya Tavolzhanka. Russian air force has apparently gone full AWOL. Has anyone seen the Russian governor, Gladkov? Uh, but then at the same time, Russians try to wrestle back the rest back the uh, information narrative, I guess. Uh, Special Forces FSB border service in the area of Novaya, Novaya Tavolzhanka in the Belgorod region. Uh, the ISW, Institute for the Study of War, American military think tank, says that the Russian sources have claimed that the pro-Ukrainian or Russian volunteer corps uh, and the Freedom of Russian uh, Legion are gone from the border settlement in uh, Belgorod Oblast as of yesterday. Uh, Russian sources published footage of Russian forces stating that they are in control of Novaya Tavolzhanka, um, which is that small village that the Ukrainians still had some elements and control over at some points yesterday, I think, and that both uh, units are no longer present in the settlement. The Ukrainian main military intelligence director at GUI reported that a senior Russian officer of the Belgorod operational group, uh, Colonel Stesev, and I reported this, was killed in action in the Via Tavolzhanka on the night of the 4th to the 5th, um, uh, and that was claimed by the Freedom of Russia legion the lsr so uh, i don't know how much activity is taking place there whether the ukrainian pro-ukrainian forces are still there but if they are i mean goodness me that's embarrassing you would expect them to be out there by now uh, since it was i presume just a raid so if we go to the northeast sector the kupians to svatova to kremina front line i reported this morning that a the russians has been shelling an ammonia pipeline this is actually in the kupiansk uh, area here and I reported that it hadn't been hit or there was no leaks. Actually, there are reports of leaks that it's been hit in several places. So there could be some serious uh, ecological issues here, environmental issues with ammonia uh, being released in this area. So that's really, uh, really bad news for the Ukrainians. And it's odd as well because I'm fairly sure the Russians that ammonia pipelines uh, go to Russia for, for their use in fertilizer um, manufactured. But anyway, uh, what do I know? Uh, there is very limited news of what is going on along this whole front line uh, from Kupiansk Stantasvatova, just uh, just the usual kind of Bilohorivka around Kremina, um, uh, Berestova, not even hearing anything about Maziativka, uh, which is up here around Kupiansk, northeast of Kupiansk, uh, just the, that area where the Russians have made some gains. Uh, so we come down. There are some claims about Ukrainians uh, making some gains around Stella Makivka. So if we come to Svatova here, we have Stella, Mik Stella Makivka uh, that apparently the Ukrainians might well be uh, doing a, a limited counterattack in that area and have taken some uh some land possibly but that is no no confirmation of that at the moment keep an eye on that there has been activity around there and kuzumovka now for a good week or so um it wouldn't surprise me uh keep the russians on their toes in that area otherwise we're going sort of down to the kremlin area bilohorivka no particular news coming out from bilohorivka there might be some activity andrew perpetua is talking about um, evidence was it evidence of a Ukrainian person driving in Verknokomyanka, uh, which is behind the Russian lines. Uh, I don't know how verifiable that is, but he was just talking about that being an interesting bit of footage. So there could be something happening there. Uh, and then uh, coming on down to uh, Bakhmut, just look at the Pule Volon map for uh, the Svatva area. And as you can see here, that Stelmakivka area has a yellow arrow so he's indicating that that there is a ukrainian counter attack in that area and then it comes down to bakhmut where there is some significant gains for the ukrainians in the northern area of bakhmut in fact where we go to no reports see what no report says um in 
support backment based on multiple sources, both open and closed. Ukrainian forces managed to take over large parts of Bakivka, as well as fully drive out the Russians from the outskirts of Orykovo, Vatilivka, and advance along the M03, while also attacking Zalizhnyansky. Okay, that, that, that was yesterday's claim. So just to give you an idea of what they're talking about here, you've got the reservoir, the Bakivka reservoir, which is just here. Now, it's worth bearing in mind that has no water in. They blew the dam, remember, and flooded the area. So that is actually not the barrier you think it might be. Uh, there were talks about Bakivka being advanced into, and then there were Russian claims that it, they were repelled from there. So Syriac Map said that the Russians repelled the Ukrainians from Bakivka and that they had made some gains to the south of the reservoir, but that's where they stopped. Um, and yeah, claims about Orokovo, Vasilivka there. Now, uh, and that's Zalizhnyansky. So if we go back to no reports there, that's the area from, from the map. You can see both in the northern area and around uh, just south of the reservoir, Bakivka Reservoir. And you can see that the Russian lines are being pushed back. That's not reflected as strongly in my mapping, but I think that could well be the case. I think it could be even worse than that. And I'll come on to that for the Russians in a second. In fact, no, we'll, we'll stay to the north of Bakhmut for now. So uh, there are... There are some claims, I was listening to Andrew Perpetua last night on his live stream, and he's got sources on the ground. And he said one of his sources on the ground, who is literally operating in this area, who has previously had 100% success rate with everything they've claimed. I mean, this is the good, he said he's even more reliable than geolocated footage, et cetera, et cetera. So when you get these, the, these claims from reliable people, sometimes geolocated footage, you don't know what's happened straight away after that. You don't know when, when the geolocated footage was taken. So you think that might prove a lot, but sometimes it's not as reliable as you think. Whereas it's someone telling you who has 100% success rate saying, this is what's happened today is really, really good source. But he said he's not updated his maps to reflect this because he can't make sense of it. So the claim is from, from his his mate that or his his source is that the Ukrainians are attacking Bakivka from the west, which is to say that they are attacking from this direction and oops, no, I don't want that. I want to draw with my pen. They're, they're attacking from this direction into Bakivka. Now he said that's really odd because that means that they would have to have control of this area there's big minefields there that previously ukrainians had lost some uh some equipment on so th that so he's not updated his map he says he can't make sense that they would be taking on bakivka from the west but th but then the guy that's telling him that is has got 100 percent success rate and he's literally there so that could be that there are gains in this area that are far more than other mappers are showing there's deep state map shows very little in terms of what's going on in the Bakhmut area. In fact, the whole front line, I'm pretty sure they're being tight on operational security. You can see the Deep State map who it shows the Russian lines in yellow here. So Deep State is a pro-Russian mapper, a pro-Ukrainian mapper, Deep State map. The blue lines are the pro-Ukrainian mapper, Andrew Perpetua, showing big gains for the for the uh, Ukrainians here, but the Russians defending this line there, and Suryat Maps is in red, and they're the pro-Russian mapper. So when the Russians are under pressure, Suryat Maps is sometimes a little bit conservative. When the Russians do well, they're pretty accurate, to be honest, Suryat Maps, but they will show the pro, you know, they're really strong on when Russia do well, and less, less strong on when, when the Ukrainians are doing well. Um, so the, the three mappers have general agreement around here, but it seems like Bakivka is under a lot of pressure from at least the south and possibly from the west. And if there, there's pressure from the west, then no re reports his map here, which shows you know that there's quite a lot of movement down the highway. Could well be uh, could well be more accurate. And there, there apparently, according to Andrew Perpetua, there are a number of Russian claims stating that this highway that the Ukrainians have actually. Uh, purchased along a lot of the high points along this highway. So it could be that actually the Ukrainians, and this is from Russian claims, I haven't verified that myself, this is according to Andrew Perpetua, they are claiming the Ukrainians have purchased here. Well, if that's if that's the case, then attacking Bakivka from the West isn't actually all that unrealistic. Anyway, the, the idea is that I guess the Russians are in trouble in this northern area uh, and, uh, and as well near Zalizhnyansky. Uh, it would come further down south. Uh, Perpetua again was talking about how possibly 
there is Ukrainian presence in some of these areas of the of of Bakhmut itself. He's saying particularly around here, around the southwestern corner, which is what basically the uh, Malia and other and Syrsky, other Russian sources have been saying, other Ukrainian sources have been saying is the case that the Ukrainians do still have a foothold there. But it could be Andrew Perpetua saying there are some claims that they might have some buildings up here as well. So there could be pressure being put on the Russians sort of all over this this front. Uh, if we go on to Rebar, uh, Rebar is a pro Russian source giving the Solodar uh, synopsis from yesterday. Ukrainian formations, they say. And you can see here, that's a Bakivka. That's pretty much uh, backed up with what Rebar is saying here. Ukrainian formations continue to bite into the defensive formations of the Russian troops and counterattack the flanks of Bakhmut. Uh, advanced enemy groups entered Bakivka to the north of Bakhmut. Fierce battles are going on. Uh, again, this is 24, one hours ago, so this is a day old. Uh, for the settlement, apparently, the FU broke through the forest belt adjacent to the reservoir since no loss of control over Zalitinyatsky and Dubova Vasilivka was reported. Uh, the advancing uh, the residential areas on the southwest outskirts of Bakhmut, the assault units of the AFU continue to put pressure on the Samolet area. The residential sector has become a zone of fierce fighting. So again, if we if we go and look at that, that this this is by the memorial uh, with that road coming in from Ivaniska. So going back, that is uh, exactly here where I was telling you. And this is where the Ukrainians said that they were still holding out. Well, Rebar is claiming not only are they still holding out, but there's actually fierce fighting there and the Ukrainians are putting pressure on the Russians. Um, some uh, Ukrainian units are advancing on the Russian positions in Klyshchivka. Units of the Russian special forces have entered into a shooting battle and are holding the line. The task of the AFU is to reach the uh, Zaitsevi Opitny line. Uh, and it says after the withdrawal of uh, Wagner, oops, sorry about that. After the withdrawal of Wagner assault groups, the burden of defense fell on the regular troops making use of the Russian armed forces uh, communication issues. Uh, Ukrainian formations wedged into the defense and cut off Russian positions piece by piece. So, you know, there's arguments to say that that Ukrainians are doing fairly well in and around Bakhmut. I say in Bakhmut as well, and that's significant. So uh, this is all good news for the pro-Ukrainians. Um, going to ISW, uh, they say of Bakhmut, um, pretty much what I've been saying, nothing too different there. Um, that assaults are ongoing in uh, Bukivka. Uh, fierce, so Russian mill bloggers claim that fierce fighting is ongoing in the southwestern outskirts of Bakhmut, so they're picking up on what Rebar is saying. Um, and another mill blogger claimed that Russian forces repelled Ukrainian assaults near Mayorsk and that fighting is ongoing near Ozaryanivka to the southwest. So that's interesting. So if you come out of here and come down, and we'll look at Klyshchivka in a second, but you come down to... Ozaryanivka going on to Mayorsk, which is that railway where the canal comes down and then meets the, there are two railway lines joining there. There is uh, activity taking place in that area. So if we go back to null reports to talk about what's going on to the south of Bakhmut, we have south of Bakhmut, the AFU uh, has over an important part of the forest strip north of Klyshchivka advancing towards the railway tracks. The primary Russian supply route Klyshchivka to Bakhmut is under heavy fire. Meanwhile, AFU assaults west of Klyshchivka continue. So that, that is to say that here, this forest area around here, there could be um, a lot of activity for the Ukrainians there trying to take out these roads that supply Klyshchivka from Bakhmut, uh, from the south of Bakhmut through there, and as well the railway track coming down um, through from Bakhmut. So there is pressure here. There could be a lot of mapping changes around Klyshchivka as well, and one would assume pressure for the Russians uh, around here, although uh, no mapping changes from any of the mappers today but that as i said that doesn't necessarily mean there hasn't been any change it's just trying to get decent verifiable information and when certain you know mappers like deep state map are possibly under instructions to have operational security uh, you can you can imagine that the maps don't change as much as reality changes so that is a uh, situation in bakhmut i think you are going to see the ukrainians continue this advance 
both on the north and the south. It'd be interesting to see whether they genuinely pressure Bakhmut itself. I would have thought that's highly attritional. But then there are claims previously that actually the U that the Russians lost more troops in the areas outside Bakhmut than they did inside Bakhmut. That it was actually more attritional doing this kind of trench warfare fighting than it was going from building to building. It's not to say it wasn't attritional doing that urban warfare. I mean, it, it definitely is. But uh, but uh, the question is, you know, what would you prefer to do? You, you would think, well not the urban warfare but actually it might be that the advancing through these fields is is costly in terms of troops right then we come down to Avdivka uh, we go to see some of the claims about Avdivka Puli Volant has a map as well uh, Igor Strelkov says as of eight o'clock fighting in the village of Opitny the enemy broke into the village and attempt to cut off our units in Vodjanye. Um but other mill bloggers have disagreed with that claim uh, Pule Volon's map shows that the Ukrainians are pushing both into Opitny and Vodjani. So let's explain where these places are. As with Bakhmut, my lines around here, certainly for the south of Bakhmut, uh, the this refers, well, really only here in, sorry, Avdivka, really only here in the Avdivka map do my three lines refer to the defensive lines of the Russians for blue, Andrew Perpetua, yellow, deep state, and red Syriac maps. Now, Syriac maps, again, when the Russians on uh, under the cosh here, doesn't really reflect the Russians getting pushed back, uh, whereas the Ukrainian mappers, I mean, it's human nature, right? When you're doing well, you want to you, you show that, and you want to be, you want to lord it and herald it, so you, you react to, to that information by reflecting it in your mapping much more easily than if your side does badly. So here where the Ukrainians are doing well in Opitny and Vodjanye and pushing the Russians back, the pro-Ukrainian mappers are showing that more readily and the pro-Russian mapper to react maps doesn't show that so much. So anyway, that's the situation there. But also, uh, apparently there are some gains in the Novelska area. I've extended... Uh, the pro-Ukrainian map, a deep state map in the yellow line all the way down to past Novelska because there, I think there will be activity uh, taking place there possibly soon. This is quite a key um, little village, Novelska, and it allows, well, it protects Pervomysky from being uh, encircled and flanked. So it could be that the Ukrainians do push back there uh, in their attempt to retake sort of the Pisky area and give Avdivka some breathing room with taking back Vodjanie and Elputnie. I don't know what their counteroffensive desires really are for here. I don't know whether this is just... Because Donetsk is right next door. I don't know what the utility of doing any kind of meaningfully large counteroffensive or counterattack move in this area would be. Whereas in other places, you know, you can see behind Bakhmut, there's, there's a lot of land. So... Yeah, you know, if if you if you were to retake Bakhmut, you could actually advance maybe fairly quickly there, where Donetsk would take a huge amount of resources to 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 do. So I don't know what would happen there going forward. And then uh, so we go on to the ISW says Ukrainian general staff reported that Russian forces conducted unsuccessful offensive operations near Avdivka, Siverny, so that's just uh, just to the north of Vodjanie and Nivelsky and Marinka. Uh, the Ukrainian general staff reported that Ukrainian forces repelled 12 Russian assaults in the Marinka area. Ukrainian Tavrisk uh, Defense Forces spokesperson Shirshin reported that Chechen forces replaced Storm Z assault elements in the Marinka area roughly a week ago, which we, we've heard, and have since lost their initial enthusiasm for offensive operations after encountering heavy Ukrainian resistance in the area. I mean, these guys are, people take the mickey out of them for being TikTok warriors. But at the end of the day, if you are, I mean, Russia's not, you, you, Russia's not your country, Ukraine's not your country. So you are fighting for Russia in Ukraine. I don't know whether you would really, uh, there's a reason why that you had so many TikTok videos of them just shooting guns into the air and wildly at buildings because that's easy to do that and your lives aren't really in danger but when it comes to actually trying to take territory in Marienka in a it, which is an apocalyptic hellscape and you have to fight from building to building you've got a high percentage chance of dying you're not so you're not so happy about that and it doesn't look so good on TikTok so I can really understand how the Chechens might be like yeah yeah not so happy about that um but you know that's war don't don't get involved at all then 
Uh, okay, so then we come down to the, sorry, I'm going fairly quickly, but you might quite like that. Um, uh, then we come down to the Zaporizhia and Southern Donetsk area. I haven't uh, really heard anything about activity around uh, Vukhlada, around Pavlivka, uh, Volodymyrivka. Uh, Pule Volon doesn't do any map of um, any, any further maps, really. They're just no more maps. So that's interesting because most of the intense activity that's taking place in this kind of period that we're in at the moment has been taking place around uh, Veloka Novosilka. I've been told it's not Velika, it's going to be something like Velika or Velika, Velika Novosilka. I don't know. Anyway, in this area, there isn't too much change from my map as far as what's going on. It's it's a little bit uh, confusing. Not quite sure who controls Nova Derivik. Derivka. There was claims of the Ukrainians taking it and the Russians pushing them back. It's more likely that that is now uh, grey zone. Uh, so that's no change from yesterday. Uh, this is the mapping as according to Deeps, uh, no, sorry, Suryak maps generally in the area. They claimed that Nikushna was retaken by the Russians, but that could also be, I mean, who knows who, who, who controls that. And uh, Novodonetsk uh, apparently. It's the same. I mean, who knows who controls that? There is uh, is pretty dynamic. It, it isn't like this is a full on counteroffensive. These are sort of probing attacks. There was some interesting data that uh, Andrew Perpetua was discussing, and the way that these narratives are framed. So it, the, the Russians did did take out some uh, equipment, didn't they? And they they were talking about there was geolocation geolocated footage of one tank and something like nine vehicles being taken out and the russians said that that was a repelled attack uh so on and so forth they had repelled a ukrainian attack but actually it wasn't so what andrew perpetua is saying is these vehicles i mean you could you could criticize this from happening but he said that these vehicles were behind ukrainian lines they weren't in an attacking it was something like here's 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 the here was where the attacking line was. Ukrainians had basically parked a bunch of vehicles in a row back here, uh, so, somewhere. I'm just picking a random field there. Parked some vehicles in a row. They weren't attacking. They were literally just kind of parked up, and that they got spotted and shelled. So in a sense, that was kind of they would have been used for attack, I guess, going forward. Uh, but but it was just a bit of maybe bad uh, planning from the Ukrainians there. But it wasn't like an, an attack was sent in and they were repelled you know, as they were attacking. It was just a, a bunch of vehicles in a line that were blown up. Uh, again, how, you know, if you're selling that as the Russian defenders, you know, winning a battle and repelling a Ukrainian attack, it's not quite that. So again, you know, one must be careful. And that, that goes to both sides, of course, the way that these things are framed. Although you'll find that Ukrainians aren't framing stuff here because there's operational security like there was in Kherson and Kharkiv. You just won't hear about it. Uh, and that's why, you know, I'm not telling you any information that is different from yesterday, really, in this area, because there is a lack of information coming out of there. Uh, potentially uh, some activity to the south of Orykiv, uh, maybe uh, in the Drozhnyanka area. I don't know exactly where that is or no, Drozhnyanka is over no, that's south of Hulaipale. Sorry, in the area maybe around Robertoni, between Robertoni and Nesterianka. I'm sure there, there was talk about something in this area, but uh, Mala Tokmacha, Tokmachka, that was it. In, in, in that area, there's some perhaps uh, activity in there in that vicinity, but not ho wholly sure. ISW pretty much says all of what I told you. Uh, that that you know there are claims going backwards and forwards in those areas. I guess as the dust settles, we'll find out. Um, a lot of news bandwidth is taken up with what's been going on in the Kherson area with the Dnipro River. Uh, that is just a massive ecological disaster, but it also is a real uh, issue for Ukraine. Actually, I think that. The, the, the success of this, if you like, from a Russian tactical military point of view, is that the Ukrainians will not be able to uh, commit to any kind of counterattack uh, in this area at all for the next two weeks. And not until the water really, um, 
you know really resides there there's just a huge volume of water flowing here flowing quickly uh, debris detritus even entire houses floating down there so if you're going to try and do an amphibious crossing not only do you have to cross a lot further which means that you're in the water for longer which means you're a more open target for russian artillery that's still active in the area uh, but you are you're it's also a risk as you're crossing you know from all those things that could hit your boats and whatnot so i think that that there that will mean that the russians can take their eyes off this area somewhat for the coming couple of weeks and concentrate more firmly on maybe zaporizhia uh they could even draw some of their forces away from the curse on our blast to zaporizhia i don't know whether they would risk doing that but that that would be certainly feed into the rationale of why they did what they did at the dam there right thank you for that uh just hopefully you know as someone that's interested in this counteroffensive, hopefully more information comes out but on the other hand you know this is war and information doesn't have to come out it, people are going to be very careful with the information that comes out there'll be spin from both sides uh as we're in the midst of you know either celebrating ukrainian successes or celebrating russian defensive successes depending on whose side you're on and so anyone who's who's reporting that news will have their own spin on it uh, so just you know be careful I, as i have my own spin uh, and i'm sure you you know how i do this by now but um it is the fog of war means that accuracy, truth is the first casualty, right? So uh, we need to be careful of that over the next few weeks. Anyway, uh, thank you. Take care. Please like, subscribe and share. Tool Pips and I will uh, speak to you soon.